that many carries, took more contact, and probably the most contact you've had in college. How'd you feel over the weekend? Honestly, my body feels better than it did uh, after the Tulane game, so definitely some positives there. But, I mean, I feel pretty good. Like, um, obviously, we had to start practicing and stuff a day early because of the, the Friday game last week. So going into a Monday practice, my body actually feels um, really good. Went back and looked at the film. What did the offense do that worked so well? I think it really just starts with, with Coach Riles and um, hats off to him and credit to him because he came out, we came out firing and he came out aggressive. And then, like I said, Coach Kleiman, um, we could have went three and out. Coach Kleiman says go for it on fourth down in, in our own territory. We get it. We end up having a 15-play drive, and it was like – we, we kind of got rolling after there, but um, I definitely think we just we executed a lot better and we came out with a lot more fire and we practiced a lot better that last week too. So it, it, had, it has a lot of things that kind of go into it, but I definitely would, would say it started with Coach Riles. I know you played some last year, obviously, but has the game started to progressively slow down for you as well this year? Yeah, for sure. And I definitely feel like from week one to week two and week two to week three, things are definitely, I'm starting to see a lot of, a lot of things out there and um, know where to go with the ball. And now it's just cleaning up my feet and, and stuff like that and just being able to make the right decision every time. But I definitely would say things are slowing down for me. The tight ends are currently leading the team in receiving. Uh, it, when you get in the red zone, are they are you looking for them, or is it just sort of a thing where they seem to be open all the time? <laughs> I guess they just open up, and I really think – what opens it up so much is our run game and, and how well they do in our run game. It's like the, the guys that are guarding them, they have to respect what we how well we run the ball. And like on the touchdown I had to um, Lofton, like when you fake a pitch to DJ, like you guys have, you have to respect that DJ could get a pitch right there and, and walk into the end zone. Um, and Lofton did a pretty good job acting um, on that play and, and kind of just slipping past the guy. And on the other one, we get in 13 personnel and I don't know how much throwing we've shown out of 13 personnel this year. So I don't think those guys were expecting it, and we get an easy walk and touchdown. So it's definitely some, some scheming stuff that um, those guys do upstairs that they do a really good job with, and, and just being able to mix up looks and, and stuff to be able to confuse the defense, I definitely feel this goes a long way in the red zone. A lot of teams don't run 13 personnel. Uh, when you're the quarterback, do you sort of realize that teams start to go a little bit heavier when you can get into that 13 personnel look and, and still play effectively out of it? Yeah, that's that's definitely what we, we get into it for, to kind of get some bigger bodies on the field. And um, our tight ends run, run really well, so being able to get them in that heavy personnel and be able to spread them out um, and make guys do things that they're not used to doing, I definitely think helps us out. You're still really stressing with the rest of the offense that you guys can do better heading into game four. I think the biggest thing is just getting on the same page as those wide receivers. Um, we have a lot of like dis decision routes, option routes, where those guys have the, the option to make a, a decision. So just being able to make sure that we're all on the same page, we're getting to our right depths on stuff um, so that I can go out there and trust that, hey, this guy's going to get here. I just put it, put the ball where I know it needs to be, where it's where I was putting it all week at practice, and I know a guy can go make a play on it. And then for me, it's just cleaning up my footwork in the pocket and being able to make um, some of those throws that, that I made all week at practice, being able to put that on film on Saturday. I was going to ask the, the cameras had a close-up of you with your, your necklace kind of dangling off early in the game. Uh, were you surprised when the ref was coming up and telling you about that, and how did you handle that the rest of the way? Yeah, he just came up and said my, my necklace had broke or my chain had broke, and I was just like, all right, just take it because we were in the middle of a drive. Um, and then he got it to our equipment on the sideline, and they got it back to me, and it wasn't even it wasn't even broke. It just kind of it came undone. So I just clipped it back on and finished the game with it. No more problems. Nah, no more problems after that. Avery, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the communication part and how that might be growing for you with with the helmet stuff and 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 the the stuff on the sideline. Yeah, um, when we get into to certain situations, Coach Wells does a little bit more talking. And then most of the time, still right now, it's just a lot of pre-snap cues or uh, if we have a play that we are going – or certain plays, we, we got to find, find my safeties on every play, but some plays it's a little bit more um, – he, he wants to put a little bit more stress on finding those guys or maybe some key guys that I need to 
be a lookout for on, on certain plays. So he might say that in my ear and stuff like that. But it's still still really minimal. Um, and he just kind of lets me go out there and play free and then gives me some tips and reminders as the game goes on. What's your initial impression of BYU defensively? Um, they're really they're really talented. They're big guys. Um, and they're really disciplined and, and sound. Those guys play hard. And it's going to be a different environment for us. Um, elevation will be up. And that, that stadium can get pretty loud. So we're going to have to definitely come, come ready to compete and ready to play. Have good. Coach has already started talking about altitude elevation stuff, and if so, how have you guys started to prepare for, for that? Yeah, I know I started taking some some supplements from um, Scott, and he kind of – it's supposed to help with elevation. or It's not going to be a night and day difference. Like, I'm not going to be able to um, breathe extremely well, but it's supposed to help kind of when we get up in those elevations and continuing to take those throughout the, the Colorado week so that um, – the, the thinner air doesn't necessarily get to us as much so that we can play for a whole four quarters. You've done a pretty good job with ball security so far, I think, what one interception in your career. But how, how do you balance being aggressive and also know, is that something that you, you're kind of growing with, knowing when to maybe take a shot and when to, when to eat it for live another day? Yeah, I feel like... Um, Sometimes, like, interceptions are going to happen. It's not, like Coach Wells says, sometimes it's just the cost of doing business. When you throw the ball enough times, you're going to throw an interception. And I, I feel like I just go out there and I play. I don't really – I wouldn't say I'm careless with the ball. I go, I don't really worry about throwing interceptions. Um, but just play my game. If, if I feel like I can make the throw, I'm going to take a chance on it. If, if I don't feel like it's a smart – throw I'm not going to put the ball in jeopardy so just being able to have that that balance but um, I wouldn't say I, I attack it any different just attack the game how it's supposed to be played